Hello again, everybody. It's Pastor Nick, and uh, we are continuing with 1 Corinthians. Today we're picking up in chapter 12, verse 1, and going through chapter 13 and verse 13. So in the next couple chapters here, Paul deals with spiritual gifts. Uh, the Corinthians were very immature, and they were baby Christians. Uh, they were not growing in their faith, but were getting hung up on the littlest things. And Paul says that in the past, they were carried away unto dumb idols. He's talking about their previous life. He writes and says that there are different gifts, but the same spirit. There are different administrations or ministries, but the same spirit. The manifestation of the spirit is given to each person to accomplish their task that God has given to them. So we are all part of the same body. Now, obviously, Paul is writing to this local church here in Corinth. Uh, the members of Corinth were a body as we who are members of FNBC Fresno are one body. Uh, we should be moving in the same direction, but we have different tasks and different responsibilities. But if we are all following the Holy Spirit, that we should be able to properly function like God desires. And the problem is sometimes that the foot will try to be the hand. We want to do other people's jobs when God hasn't called us to do that. Notice that Paul writes in verse 18 that God has placed the members of the body where he wants according to what pleases him. So you might not like being the foot, because you say you would rather be the hand, but if you would just do what God has called you to do, then He will be pleased, and in all reality, you will be pleased and joyful in the process. In verse 28, he writes that God put these positions in the church. Uh, not everyone is equipped with the same gifts because they don't have the same position or task. The Corinthians not only had schisms over which leader they followed, but also over this issue of spiritual gifts. The funny thing is, is that it appears that they wanted the least of all the spiritual gifts. And Paul says he is going to show them a more excellent way in which they covet the best gifts. This problem is still around today. Uh, the least of the spiritual gifts is speaking in tongues and interpreting and Paul's going to make that very clear. The Corinthians seem to desire these things, but Paul reveals they should want the greater gifts that remain. And Paul continues on with this explanation in chapter 13. Now, chapter 13 is known as the love chapter of the Bible. It's all about love being the most needful thing. Paul says that if you do a bunch of these other things that seem important, but you don't love, then you have nothing. You are like a symbol that is played by itself. It just clangs and clangs and clangs. It doesn't make very beautiful music. Uh, you can speak with tongues or prophesy or give all of your money away to the poor, but if you don't have love, then you have nothing. He explains what the love of God truly is and what it does. 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7, it says, Charity suffereth long, and is kind, envieth not, it vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. It bears all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. And so we see that love does so much. And at the beginning of verse 8, he says that it never fails. Love never fails. Now, I want to read to you the remaining verses because I think they need explanation within this passage. In verse number 8, again, it says, Charity or love never faileth. Notice this. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part... And we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. 
Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So we see here that while love never fails, that speaking in tongues and prophecy are going to be done away. They are going to cease. But the question is, when? Notice it says here, it says, when that which is perfect is come. The perfect thing that it's talking about is the completed word of God. In fact, James clarifies this for us. James says it is called the perfect law of liberty. He says that if a man looks into the word, it is like beholding his face in a glass. Uh, understand that the, the word of God is perfect. It is the perfect law of liberty. It is that perfect thing. You see, speaking in tongues and prophecy were never some mysterious thing. They were for people to understand the gospel and the word of God. That was the purpose. Before the Bible was completed, these things were how the gospel was clearly given to the world. When you saw Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost, everyone understood in their own language. But the key is that they understood what was being said. Other times there was an interpreter to say what was being spoken, but still it was understood. What people call speaking in tongues today is really just gibberish. And I want you to understand very clearly that it's not of God. There is no more need for these things because we have something far better today. We have the completed word of God. We don't need some new prophecy or some new vision because the word of God is everything that God wants us to know. And at the end we see it says, Now abideth faith, hope, and love. So what are the gifts that we should be seeking and desiring? It is faith, hope, and love. These three things will get us through to the end of this age. Now, some have said that the perfect thing that is to come and do away with prophecy and tongues is the second coming of Christ. But this makes no sense in this passage of Scripture. You see, when Christ comes... There will be no need of faith because faith will become sight. There will be no need of hope to remain. Why? Because our hope will see him face to face. Our hope will have arrived. Jesus is our only hope. The only one of these three gifts that it mentions at the end here that will remain when Jesus comes is love. That is the one gift that will endure throughout the eternal ages. And so understand that that perfect thing coming, that can't be speaking of the, of the coming of Jesus because there will be no more faith or hope either. Uh, but that perfect thing that it talks about is the completed word of God. Uh, and so praise God we have that today. At this time, we're looking at Proverbs 21, verses 21 to 24. In verse 21, we see that if you seek for righteousness, you will find it. Uh, in verse 22, a wise person is able to conquer the mighty. Why? They use their wisdom to plan how to take down a city. Verse 23, having control over our mouths can save us from a lot of trouble. In verse 24, we see that the proud and haughty scorner uh, in wrath uh, will, will have God's wrath poured out on them. Bow our heads. Wonderful God, we thank you for your word. Lord, thank you that it's completed and in perfection. Thank you that we have it, Father, so that we know everything that you desire for us to know. And God, uh, just open our minds and our hearts to, uh, to study it and to understand it and receive it and do what it says. And Father, help us not to be confused or live in confusion like so many that are in the world. But Father, uh, help us uh, to walk clearly in your light. Uh, Lord, as, as your, uh, David said, uh, that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Father, help us to study it, to meditate upon it, uh, that we might know uh, the path to go. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.